the solid lying under the surface z equals square root of 4 minus y squared and above the rectangular region r where x is between 0 and 2 and y is between 0 and 2 is illustrated in the following graph evaluate the double integral of f of x y over the region of the area where f x y is equal to the square root of 4 minus y squared by finding the volume of the corresponding solid. So the way we're going to take care of this problem is the same way we did the last. We're going to set up a double integral here. Now if you don't remember, the double integral we're going to set up here is set up in, in one of these forms. So we can do the dy first or we can do the dx first. So for this one, let's pick uh, the dy first. And it doesn't matter. Um, we just have to pick one. So we're going to do the dy first. So we're going to do a. So that simply means we're going to have the integral here. And then our function is the square root of 4 minus y squared. And then we're going to go dy dx. Now again, we look at our bounds here. And for dy, the bounds are 0, 2. And for the dx after that, it's also 0, 2. So that's going to be here. Because remember, we work from the inside out. And that's what we see here and both here. Okay, so now we have our setup here. And let's talk about what that looks like geometrically. So if we're looking at the dy first here, that means we're starting at the origin. And we're just going to come out from that origin in the y direction and we're going to come out here and then keep in mind here that we're dealing with this height so that square root of 4 minus y squared so that means and that height being projected up from those points on the y-axis and just extended in that direction of y so that we're creating with that height that 4 minus y squared there and then we take that whole area and then we in essence project it forward to cover up that whole volume and that's the idea of what's going on with this problem so what we're going to do first then is we're going to actually do the dy first because remember we work from the inside out so that's what we're going to do first. And I'll just keep the um, parentheses there just so you, you can keep in perspective what we're actually doing here. So now the first step for this problem then would be to um, take that 0 to 2. And then think about the integral of this square root of 4 minus y squared. What I see right away is a trig substitution. Now we have two Pythagorean identities we actually use for the purpose of trig substitution. So those are sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 and tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Now the idea here is I'm trying to make it look like this format here. So here I have a number minus a squared variable. So if I look at this top equation here and I solve for cosine squared theta, this is going to result in oops, cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. And that's what we see here. We see the number minus the variable squared. And that's what we see here. So the identity, or not the identity, but the variable we're going to sub in for y is sine of theta of some sort. Now remember, if I have y equaling a trig function, that's essentially going to be squared. So when I pick my y, I'm going to want 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. And the reason why is because if I pull a 4 out, I get 1 minus sine squared theta. And this is what I'm looking for from up there. So what that tells me then is if I'm looking for a 4 sine squared theta, and I know if I plug this in for y, it's going to be squared, then that tells me that I want to pick a y equal to 2 times the sine of theta. 
And the reason why is when I square it, that's going to take that whole thing and square it, which is going to give me that four sine squared that I actually need here so that when I factor it out, that four there, so I'm able to factor out that four there, so then I can use my identity here. So that will in turn then be four cosine squared theta because that's what one minus sine squared theta equals, and then I can square root that. So this is all the forethought of this problem when dealing with the trig substitution. I just gave you a crash course in that. If that seems overwhelming, get a hold of me. So my y is then going to equal 2 sine of theta. And then dy is going to equal 2 cosine theta d theta. And then now we can do our sum. Now, in summing this all in, we still have the integral from 0 to 2. And then we still have the square root. And then we still have the 4 minus. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write 4 sine squared theta. Only for the reason that um, I'm already thinking of it squared here. Okay, and then my dy now is equal to 2 cos theta d theta from the trig substitution. So I'm going to write times 2 cos theta d theta. And that's our sub. So now what we're going to do here is, oh, I need to put that dx in. So that would be dx. Okay, so that's our initial step here. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to clean this up some. Now we can see here that this is actually the integral from 0 to 2. And this is the integral from 0 to 2. And this is going to be the square root of 4. And I'm just going to write this out for you so you can see what I did here. Now one thing I think about when I'm always using my trig sub that essentially I always want these numbers to be the same. Um, so this number needs to be squared, and when it's squared, it should equal this number here. And if it does, then I'm good. That's why I knew also that it was needed to be a 2, because when I square it, I'm going to get that 4. So then I can pull the 4 out in this fashion. And that's always the case when I'm dealing with these trig subs. And then this is going to be 2, which I'm going to pull the 2 out over here, and that's this 2 here. And then I'm just going to have the cosine of theta d theta and dx. Okay, so now I know that the 1 minus sine squared theta actually equals cosine squared theta. So now I get 0 to 2. I have this 2 now, the integral from 0 to 2. And this is going to be square root of 4 cosine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta, dx. And there's my inner integral. Okay, so now the square root of 4 cosine squared x is going to be 2 cosine, 2 cosine x. So then I get the integral from 0 to 2. I have this 2 here, integral from 0 to 2. So I'm going to get another 2. And this here is going to be a cosine theta, but times a cosine theta it's going to end up being a cosine squared theta, d theta, and then all of that dx, because that's for the other integral that we haven't dealt with yet. Okay, so now from here, we need a trig identity. And that trig identity is cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Or another way to write this, 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And this was the one I'm going to use here uh, because it's going to be simpler to pull the 2 out, the 1 half out, and plug it in that way. So that's the, the trig sub I'm going to use here. So in place of the cosine squared, I'm going to use this trig sub here. So 
So this equals the integral from zero to two. And then I'm, now I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna leave that two in sign because you'll see what happens. So let's integral from zero to two. And then instead of this cosine squared theta, I'm gonna put the one I wanted in there, but I have this two first and that's this one. And then I'm gonna write in the one half plus, no, one half, excuse me, one plus cosine two theta. And then dx. Oops, I forgot my d theta too. So d theta dx. All right, so there it is. So now these cancel here. So then we get the integral from zero to two times two, the integral from zero to two, one plus cosine two theta, d theta dx. So now this integral here becomes easy to do. So then that's gonna result in the integral from zero to two, and that's gonna be two theta plus, now when I take the integral of this, that's gonna be sine of two theta, and then I gotta do the derivative of the inside, those gonna be a one half. And then when I times it by two, I'm just gonna end up with sine of two theta for the integral. And that's gonna run from zero to two and then dx. Okay, so now from here, um, it's not exactly where I need it to be because this is in terms of theta and this zero to two was for my x and my y. So now I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to know what theta is here. So now I go back to my trig substitution. So that was here. So now I'm gonna take that idea and I'm just gonna put it in down here so you can actually see why this equality is gonna be the way it is. So in the process of that, I know y equals two sine of theta. So that means sine of, no, sine of theta, not two theta. So sine of theta equals y over two. So now if I created this triangle here, and this is the other side of it, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And then this side here, once I use the Pythagorean theorem, is gonna be four minus y squared. And that's what this side is gonna equal. So now, since I integrated this thing, now I need to figure out what theta is. Now theta is, I would have to sign inverse both sides of this equation here. So my theta is going to be sine inverse of y over 2. So now for this 2 theta, I can now plug in uh, what um, theta is in terms of y. So now I still have the integral from 0 to 2. Okay, But now instead of that theta there, I have my 2. And for the theta, I'm going to get sine inverse of y over two. And furthermore, now I'm gonna talk about that plus two sine theta. So this is gonna be plus. Now, the sine of two theta is actually two sine of theta, cos of theta, which is another identity. And that's what we're gonna use for that second piece. Now again, these are both gonna be from zero to two, and I still have this dx for the other integral. Okay, so now that we have this set up, now we can continue with the two sine of theta, cos of theta, and get what that is in terms of x and y. So this equals the integral from zero to two, and I could pull the two back out again, which, I don't know if it makes a difference either here nor there, but I'll just keep it in. Um, 
we have to clean this up so we can make it easy to sub in my two and my zero because this is in terms of theta still. So this here is gonna be my two sine inverse of y over two plus the two is okay. And then the sine of theta, when I look at this triangle here is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's gonna be y over two. And then for the cosine of theta, that's gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's gonna be the square root of four minus y squared over two. And that's gonna be from zero to two dx. Okay, so now I can plug everything in now because everything is back to x's and y's, or I should say y's here. Um, so now we can plug in the, the bounds here and get, actually get a value for that. So it equals, so before I get started, the twos cancel out here. So then I get two sine inverse of one because when I plug this two in here, two over two is gonna be one. Okay, and then I have plus here. And then when I plug in two here, that's also gonna give me a one. But when I plug the two inside of here, it's gonna be four minus four, which this whole thing's gonna give me zero. So even though this is one here, I'm gonna get a zero. So that means I'm just gonna write plus zero. Okay, and then for the minus the lower bound now, that lower bound, I'm gonna plug in zero. So that's gonna be two sine inverse of zero, because that's just plugging it in here. Zero over two is just zero. And then plus, and then when I plug this in here, that's gonna be a zero altogether. And it doesn't matter what this turns out to be in here. Once I times it by zero here, it's gonna also be zero. So I'm just gonna say, plus zero. So then we have this here and then this is still dx. So now when we clean all this up now, this is gonna be the integral of zero to two. Now two times the sine inverse of one is gonna be pi halves. Hopefully you're okay with that. And everything else here, that's zero. And the sine inverse of zero is zero because the sine of zero is zero. Um, so hopefully you know that as well, plus zero. So I just got a bunch of zeros there. So I just end up with the integral from zero to two of two times pi over two, which is gonna simplify even more. So zero to two, the integral of pi dx, then is gonna be the integral of pi, which is just a constant, is now gonna be pi x from zero to two. Now, when I do the upper bound minus the lower bound, I'm gonna end up with two pi minus really zero pi, so minus zero equals two pi. So the answer to this problem is two pi. So this volume is gonna be two pi, and we would say cubic units. They didn't really give us a unit here. Um, so we could just say units cubed. And I guess I could write that. So I don't really have any room there, but units cubed.